today, Marte? I'm doing pretty good. Reviewing uh, <laughs> our book here, uh, Be More Pirate by Sam Conif Al Dente. Conif. Alande. Al Dente. Alande. Yeah. So. So we're just wrapping up. We've been reading this one for three weeks. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? I it's good. I was just, uh, you know, it's summertime. Lots going on. Um, bad timing to read this book. Although it's very good. I was just not as interested as I would have been, I think, a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an interesting book for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's very different. So th since this is the last week, we'll just give you um, our takeaways from the book and maybe sure. what uh, what we'll be doing in our business to uh, be more conscious of, of, of what this book talks about. Yeah. So for me, um, my biggest takeaway was that, you know, the established rules and the established way of doing things are never set in stone. So at the golden age of piracy, right, um, during the time of Mr. <laughs> Captain Black, <laughs> Sam Black, or, yeah. and uh, Captain Morgan and Blackbeard, you know, the, the Navy was the established organization. Yeah. It was royal. It was English, uh, Scottish, uh, Irish. Um, they, they had set ways of doing things on the open sea. And a lot of those were seamen. <laughs> yes, the seamen. They were um, they were not equitable. Um, oftentimes, they would have slaves on their their ships to do the work. Yeah, they would um, often would not get paid. A lot of sailors wouldn't get and paid. Forced, forced, to, forced uh, labor. Yeah, um, it was uh, there was no diversity in the mm. the paid uh, crewmen. It yeah. was only you know, English, uh, white men yeah. and the pirates didn't see eye to eye with the way of doing things. So, you know, looking into this, it's sort of counterintuitive to what you think a pirate ship would have been like. Yeah. You think that a pirate ship would have been total anarchy where it's a free for all and you know, yeah, you, get pay, you might get paid. You might not get paid. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, there was no slaves. Right. No slaves on, yeah. on pirate ships. They were amongst the first cooperative, um, you know, enterprises yeah. of history, yeah. where everybody had a say, everybody had a word, and um, slavery was non non-existent on pirate ships. Um, and um, yeah, just a revolution. Uh, started with those guys. Yeah, I know. So um, he covered the uh, golden age of piracy, yeah. which lasted roughly 40 years. Yeah. And what I found that was really interesting is the pirate code is not something that was ever written, um, but all ships knew what the pirate code was, and they all had their little tweak on it, mm -hmm. and they would always add something based on on their failures yeah um so the only difference between um geez, uh henry morgan was the first well-known i guess who uh, started with the pirate code the difference between his in 1670 ish yeah to 1722 which was uh william kidd uh, sorry bartholomew roberts is that they added stuff based on their failures yeah. like uh, no gambling or no getting drunk before tying up the <laughs> um, captives so they would yeah and those rules are they're funny but yeah. this this was like known amongst all pirates but w was never written yeah because most of them were probably illiterate yeah that's what they think right yeah it's tough to talk about stuff that happened 400 years ago yeah but they seem to have been the pioneers in, in revolution yeah. of, uh, of fair I, th I think I think this book it's, it's a great book but I think the pirate part of it for me was more interesting than the takeaway on my business okay I, I enjoyed learning about pirates more than you know learning about being more pirate <clears throat> if that makes any sense 
I think the author did a great job of addressing that, saying like, don't go out of your way to break the law. No, no, right? for sure. <clears throat> Just look at society, look at your business model, and <clears throat> what are things that people have been doing a certain mm -hmm. way that you could do a better way. Right, so the last part covers that. Yes. Right, where he says nothing is original. Yes. I think, was it Peter Drucker that said that? No, I, he talks about Peter Drucker at some point, but... Um, he talked about artists that steal. Yeah, right? yeah. And Originality doesn't exist or something like that. <clears throat> the, best, Anyways. the best description of creativity that I, I've ever heard is creativity is the combination of two existing ideas. Right. Because when you look at it, it boils down to that. Yeah. Right. I like it. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I was trying to think of what I can do in my business to be more pirate. But the thing is, the company we work for, EXP Realty, is a pirate of its own. Like, we're, we're aboard the uh, pirate ship. That's yeah. called EXP Realty. True. It's very different, very um, forward thinking. So, what else can we do? I um, honestly don't know how to answer that stick to our <clears throat> this this is a yeah, little bit this is different uh, yeah right so i think most of the things that we do are uh, more pirate than most yes real estate agents gets the wheels turning though yeah i don't have anything clever. you can always improve yeah i don't have anything clever to say that you know i'll be doing this yeah because yeah. of this book but It definitely made me think about what I could do differently. Yeah. I think the score, like my score for this book, um, will be lower than it probably should be just because of the timing. Um, a lot's happened in the, in the past couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, business and personal that I wasn't uh, concentrated on, concentrating on, uh, on the book so much. So maybe give it a rating as if you were... Yeah, I'll try my best. Yeah. Yeah. I I like the storytelling part of it. It's good. So maybe I should give my rating now. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay, so uh, every book that we read, we do give it a, a rating uh, zero out of five. And um, I guess, go ahead. I'll give it a 3.9. Ooh. Yeah. Still pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. It's just... Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I should like it more, but unfortunately, that's. I mean, three point nine is still pretty good. Still pretty good. Yeah. I liked it. It's original. Um, it's different. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give it a good rating. Three point seven five. Is where. Okay. I'll rate it. Rami said. Uh, we should give these ratings blinded, so we don't know what the other guys are, are rating it before I, I don't feel like it influences what i'm gonna say i uh, know no okay no um rami said 3.8 3.8 that's why i said 3.9 <laughs> no no <laughs> <laughs> no rami said 3.8 um that's all he said unfortunately but he's the one that recommended it good choice uh it's a great book honestly i think for me it's just timing was off yeah and we've read so many great books that you know it's tough man no it's tough and the next one will be uh very interesting very i think we'll raise some some good topics well i'll go get a copy of the book sure um i don't know why this book is considered to be controver controversial because yeah, it, it's really know. not it's just one guy giving his opinion it's a professor yeah. jordan b peterson He's everywhere these days. Uh, he's very opinionated. I so think he's he's a bit of a pirate in today's. Yeah. You know. Yeah. This book was was highly criticized in these past few months. When's the last time? When's when's the uh, when did we do that podcast where that was? So where why? the book was being criticized in New Zealand. Okay, so there's a few reasons why. <clears throat> Jordan Peterson is considered to be controversial. The first one 
would be the reason why he's so popular today is because he made a stand at uh, the University of Toronto when he was asked to call students by their preferred pronouns. Okay. And there's a law in Ontario now that if you don't address people by their preferred pronouns, that you're actually liable. Right. In the law. Yeah. And you could be fined. Right. Yeah. It's illegal. And he refuses to be influenced by the government or any law to modify his speech. Okay. Right. Um, he really doesn't have a problem calling somebody a him or a her if they decided to, you know, change their sex or whatever. He's fine with that. He just doesn't want to be compelled by the law to to be forced to say specific pronouns. Yeah. Right. I have um, to agree with that. And he doesn't. He's not. You know anti-trans or, or anything like that of course you know yeah. but on the surface when you hear that you might say oh this guy's an asshole right but if you listen to him he lost his job too i think no 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 he didn't lose his job but uh, he was close to losing his job hmm. and um, a lot of the professors at that university you know no longer talk to him and yeah i don't think he needs that job anymore he's yeah you know, a multi um twice uh, best-selling author now yeah and what was uh, his first book uh, maps of meaning okay yeah cool he's also he owns a program for uh, self-improvement okay it's called uh future future authoring program okay yeah i think we should always start by uh talking about the author yeah well it's the first time that we've picked an author that i'm so familiar with yeah um second reason why he's controversial is because a lot of these shootings have been, um, you know, incels or whatever. And that's his, um, his target demographic is, you know, people that are struggling in life. And he reaches those people a lot, right? And the, the shooter in New Zealand had a copy of this book. Oh, uh, okay. Right? Okay. And people were like, oh, it's because yeah. of this book that he was, you know, that's not it. I mean, mm -hmm. all he's trying to do is trying to help people. He probably probably had a Bible as well. Yes, you yeah. know, he probably had a bunch of other books, but Jordan, a Daniel Steele book. A Daniel Steele <laughs> uh, <a laughs> that he found on the side of the street for sale for five cents. Oh, I think we have a visitor. There's a little puppy in the office today. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, let's wrap it up. I think this one will be great. Uh, yeah. So, twelve rules for life. Magnus it's gonna be a long Jordan one. Jordan, yeah. Give ourselves like five weeks or something. So there's twelve rules <laughs> for twelve rules for life. So the first portion will be the intro and the first two rules. So six weeks. And then we'll do six weeks book yeah. club, and at least we'll have like specific topics. Yeah. Every week, you can I let like it, it in, Rahel. I like it. Okay. Cool. C'est bon. This one I'm really excited for because it's totally different and the first time I, I i actually started the um audible for this one and his voice is annoying <laughs> well it's annoying it's not but that, annoying. that wasn't the problem though it's because i wasn't expecting because i i had read or listened to a, a, a bunch of self-help yeah this is not self-help this is one man giving his opinion and take yeah. whatever you want of it yeah yeah so that was the difference and i wasn't expecting that so i was always waiting for him to give me a lesson when no, he's not giving you a lesson. He's giving you his opinion, and you take what you want from what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So, looking forward to this. Do you know about his diet? His diet? He's a meditarian? <laughs> he's a carnivore. Carnivore? Meditarian? Sure. Yeah. For Steakitarian? His daughter had um, arthritis, uh, autoimmune uh, disease. Okay. And for years, she couldn't... Uh, figure out what was wrong yeah and she read up on this carnivore diet and she's been eating only red meat for a few years mm -hmm. all her problems went away her inflammation's down everything hmm. yeah interesting character cool yeah doesn't doesn't mean it's gonna work for everybody but it's just interesting nice so, okay Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Well, yeah. Get this book. Read it. Definitely worth it. <laughs> that Charlie. <laughs>
Go ahead, we're out. For us? Do, do, do. I don't know. Oh, I thought you meant the uh, storage that we got down here. No. Yeah. Hoi! Cha! Oh, is this Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. No worries. <laughs>